Okay, I think uh, we are now. Broadcasting online. I guess so. Okay, we are, yeah, we good, are to go. good to go. So, uh, please, so, uh, can uh, you please guys start the talk? Yeah. Okay, you can you hear me? Yes. yes, I can hear you. Yes, can hear. Okay. Okay. okay, thanks Tata-san to give me the chance, chance to give a talk in this coffee, coffee meeting. meeting. I can hear my can echo. Hear my echo. Oh. It, it's okay, okay. Oh, it's better now. Okay. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about not theory and the relay with the topological semi metal in condensed matter. So the outline of my talk will be we talk about mass, introduce mathematic and uh, Jones polynomial in not theory. So the just introduction. And the physics, we talk about what is the topological line node semi metal. And later we talk about these two ideas, we combine them together and their connection. And solve the problem. So the way to uh, for myself I learn to not theory. Basically, of course, it read some reference, but it, I think the easiest way is uh, there's a YouTube channel from it's Richard Hepworth, and he has some brief introduction talk about what's the Jones polynomial, some not uh, invariant. So I think it's an easy way to learn, and uh, so this is for mathematical part. And another reference is the reason my paper in PRL is talk about the physics about topological line node and connect to a uh, not theory. All right, so this is the introduction and uh, outline. And let me just talk about the mathematic here. So Jones polynomial in not theory. What is Jones polynomial? Uh, basically Jones polynomial is a not invariant, characterized the oriented knot and uh, link. So, um, and we have a knot, knot diagram. What is knot diagram is the, basically we discussed the object. It's a one dimensional object in three dimensional space. So this is called line, uh, knot diagram. Means the, basically these things, this object is from 3D, one dimensional in 3D, embedded in 3D, and do the projection in 2D. So we draw this knot diagram. So this one is like a, cover, uh, it's separate with this one, but it's a little bit close to us, this line. So we have like a trifold knot and a half link, two link here. And this three, uh, one dimensional object in 3D, they can be characterized so-called Jones polynomial. And this oriented means this arrow represent the, this, uh, this, uh, this flow, maybe flow around this uh, nodal line, this, this, this one dimensional object here. So let me just show uh, some example, just focus on trifold knot clearly here. So it's called knot equivalence. So here, you can see it's a 3D, it's blue trifold knot in 3D. And we can do projection in multiple way. Like we can project to this plane and project to this plane and project to the bottom plane. So we have in uh, this knot diagram, we have uh, three, maybe look different diagram. But actually these three knot diagrams describe the same thing. Describe, can be described by this uh, <coughs> Jones polynomial, this polynomial. I will explain how do we derive this polynomial later. So another thing is uh, we, I just used the uh, Tanat Kuchi some drawing in two, two days ago He in the math similar to show basically we put a flow here, the trophy knot, and also this is like a figure in it, but it's not figure in knot. They are equivalent. So we just, uh, this is just copy from the Tanat Kuchi sounds drawing. We, how do we show this equivalent? We just continuously define this figure to this one. So the idea is we just uh, uh, expand this line to a very big one and uh, flip to this side and expand this one, this loop bigger. So it turns out this 
become the figure A. So exactly, you don't make any cut, any discontinuity, the trifold knot, it's equivalent is figure A like knot here. They are equivalent. And this knot equivalent tell you, okay, if they can continue to deform from one another, and they were described by this same Jones polynomial, this magical thing, Jones polynomial can be like a universal, you don't care, you characterize this localized. All right. And another important thing is the for Jones polynomial is orientation. Here is half link. So half link, they can separate this called reverse half link. So as you can see, these two figure, the only difference is this like a crossing point here. This one, the, the, this one counts up first, and the least right moving or uh, left moving counts up first. So these crossing are different. And no matter how do you deform or rotate these two, they will never be the same. So because they will never be the same, they can be cannot be described by the Jones polynomial. So indeed they are different. So they, the Jones polynomial for these two half link, they are different. It's look like at least one. However, these two figure, they are the same. The way to understand why these figure are the same is we just uh, have a, can you see my drawing? Okay, uh, this is a rotary chain axis and we rotate this uh, half link by 180 degree. So this arrow will just flip and the configuration of the cross still the same. So we can say, okay, these two are same figure and it's described by the Jones polynomial. Okay, all right. So any question at this moment? Yes, I have. Okay, please. The top left and bottom right uh, top can be left, rotated into uh, each other. Uh, top if you uh, no, they, they cannot rotate and to each pole other. Coming out of the page, you can rotate around that pole 180 degrees. Uh, you may with top left and this one, right? These two, right? You are saying about these two are laid the same. Right. If you put a pole coming out of the page, like right through the center of the knot, and you rotate 180 degrees. 180 degrees, okay. Do they not rotate into each other? Uh, no. Uh, if you doing this, it's exactly the same with this one. So the, the crossing also rotate, right? So the crossing will rotate to like this one. This is different. The crossing, the key point is crossing is different. 180 degrees, as you can see here. Is that clear? Uh, no, hello? but okay. I'll have to mess with, I'll take a screenshot and rotate it on my computer. Yeah, so as you can see, this one will rotate 180 degrees, so it will become still the same, this is the, the right moving still on top. Yeah, I just picked up my laptop and rotated it. I agree. Okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, all right, okay. So, let's say, all right, okay. Okay, I need to change the spotlight. Okay, okay, I need to clean this up. Okay, so, Right now, <laughs> we talk about the way how do we get the Jones polynomial from all the knot, okay, to all the knot here. So basically, it start from the scan relation. Uh, the idea is the uh, okay. We can use the example here. So the the red point correspond to the red point here. I just show you the big red point here. So these three diagram, they are almost the same but only different is this red point. And the red point, it can be distinguished as L plus and L minus and L zero. So as you can see, the, this uh, scan relation just told you, okay, 
The Joe's polynomial of least three diagram, the relation is described by least scale relation. So if we know two of them, we can get the, the remaining one. For example, if we have, uh, we, we first, the start point we define on that, basically just a ring, then you can see these two, first two diagrams, they just have the, like a ring on that. So the Jones for linear for these first, for first two should be just one. First two is one. And the last one, zero, zero case, you can look at here, they are separate. So this is different with the, the first two. So we, this is called unlink. So just unlink means the two separate ring, they separate. So from this scan relation, we can get the Jones polynomial for the unlink. Basically, it's look like this. <laughs> so, so on and so forth. If we give a nut, we can use any the iteration start from our nut and getting very, the very complicated Jones polynomial from some other nuts. Let me just use another example. Here is half link. And we, right now we focus the red point is here. As you can see, so the red points correspond to this enlarged one. And the enlarged one also correspond, can be described by the trigger relay with this scan relation. We always list scan relation like this. Okay, so the first half link, we don't know anything about this polynomial. So that's what we need to use this relation to obtain. So the second one is unlink, but we already know that. So we can plug in. And the last one, as you can see the configuration, it's uh, just on that. So we plug it to, finally we can get, uh, do some algebra, we can get a half link. It's like this form I gave him before. So, so on and so forth, any kind of uh, nuts, we can do this by iteration, use this uh, scan relation. So if we consider the, <coughs> this four crossing point, consider all possible configuration, and then we have the, uh, five possibility, unknot, unlink, half-link, Trafoli knot, and the new thing is Solomon knot. Solomon knot is work like this. So the idea is the, we have three possible configuration for three, uh, these four knots. And we, if we label the four knot by this L, this knot is plus minus, which will correspond to these three figure. And uh, the number here just you sum over this n plus is uh, plus one minus is minus one. For example, this l plus zero zero corresponds to n equal two, and you like a table is half link. So this table just summarize all you have three four course point and just show you okay you have all these five type of uh, nut here. All right, so I finish your uh, introduction of the uh, Jones polynomial. Any questions for this not theory? Because after that, I can talk about physics. So it's completely different. Okay, if there's no question, I keep going. So uh, the mathematics stop here now. We just talk about another different things and uh, hopefully they can be connected to each other. So in physics, Condensed matter system, we have some material. And the way to understand the material we usually do is look at the energy spectrum of this material. So here's energy spectrum, here's your energy and the momentum space. So basically this tell you the energy of your electron in momentum space. Okay, then with this spectrum, we have an idea, some idea of, about Fermi level, just the uh, Fermi level's occupation. The, the, like, like here, below the Fermi level, all the electrons are occupied. So you, this is four of electrons here. And if Fermi level is in the gap, energy gap here, we say it's an insulator because the, all the electron is in the band and they cannot move around, they are full occupied. So it's like a plastic is insulated. They won't conduct any electric current, electron current here. So, <laughs> and if we put Fermi level cut in the band here, and the electron actually can move around along this energy band. So 
this can be and the latent conductor current. So this can be metal or semi-metal in this case. So we are interested in this case, we have a uh, Fermi level exactly at this crossing point to see what's going on. So we draw like a momentum space in 2D and here's energy. And this blue is energy band and of course red. Hey, here I make, actually this blue should be circle around but I make it easy to see is at least some cut up here. Okay, so the blue band and the <coughs> red energy band, they have a crossing here. Basically from the layers of line, energy band crossing. And this energy band crossing basically be cut, they form the ring. So if we draw in three dimensional brain zone, KZ equal to zero, so suppose this ring is at KZ equal to zero, it's a ring sitting at the, uh, a K, like the plane here. So here is the some one dimension, it's like a, our, we discussed not theory, less of one dimensional object in three dimensional space. But right now it's in the momentum space. Okay. And uh, this, this is called a nodal line. These are energy crossing and uh, they just have a, like a node here. All right, uh, so this slide is a about, <coughs> sorry about that. Uh, this is talk about, oh, okay, right now we have the, the, the nodal line here, the energy band crossing. And uh, if the system has a so-called chiral symmetry, H is Hamiltonian, and S is the kind of the symmetry operator, satisfy this condition, we can separate uh, Hamiltonian written like this small edge of diagonal part. Then with this, we can use this small edge to define the topology invariant winding number. Basically the integral path is along this uh, green circle. We can do counterclockwise. And the least topology invariant is always integer. So what does that mean? Integer means the least always quantized and this ring is kind of singular. So if this ring, the integral, this mu here, winding number, is not zero. Then this nodal line is protected because like a laser pole, a complex plane laser pole here, and the integral is not zero. So then this pole is protected. They cannot be vanished unless layers two are the same va va vanished. Okay, sorry, unless they are anti pole and pole collapse together and vanish. So the laser pole here along this ring, they are protect stable. So this kind of topological ring protected here. Okay, and the important thing in Jones polynomial is oriente orientation. So orientation is also important. So with this topological invariant, we can define layers orientation. What does that mean here? We have a path integral. And this path integral provide a positive winding number. And we can use the right hand rule and we can have the least orientation of this string should go this way. However, if there is a negative number from this direction, integral direction, another one should be absent. So the, the, the orientation of the ring should be go another way. So basically this is, we use this invariant to define the orientation ring. All right. So which is a good thing, which means so we, I uh, properly define the orientated nodal line here in condensed matter system laser invariant here. So once we have orientation nodal line, we can use this to define to okay to use just strong polynomial to describe the top not topology of this oriented uh, nodal line. Like if we have nodal line like a tree foil knot, they can describe by the this uh, Jones polynomial or half link, but the meaning here uh, is different. The meaning is that the ring, this, this half link and the trophy no, you never, you never see in the real world. It's a hidden in this material. It's in your band, energy band spectrum. So this is a kind of energy space hidden uh, and the, 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 the not hidden in the energy space in the momentum space, I should say that. All right, so any questions so far?
the, the nut that we talk about, it's not real nut in physical space. It's real nut in the material. It's heating in the material. All right, so if there's no question, I kind of keep going. So the idea is we have a uh, Jones polymer as a tool to understand the line node to matter. Questions? Uh, I have a question. Okay, please. Uh, uh, how, how did you orient it uh, in the previous slide? Uh, two, two previous slide. Yes, 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 yes. How, how did you oriented this circle, uh, this red circle? Could you, okay, could you... uh, this orientation relay with the previous the environment I defined. Uh, mm -hmm. We can define just the, the path integral, use the small edge to define there's a topologic invariant along this circle. The, the, this, is, this green circle is integral path. Where is okay. the green circle? It's an integral path uh -huh. of a you know, invariant. Okay. And the, this integral path, you can do the integral clockwise or counterclockwise, right? Yes. The direction. So the, the, the orientation I define here is when you do, uh, for example, you do counterclockwise, you get a positive uh, the winding number, the integral, mm -hmm. if it's positive. Mm -hmm. And we use this integral path orientation, like a right hand rule, then they should go this way. Like rotate this one, like a right hand rule. This, is, this four finger is your integral path direction. Okay. And the thumb is your orientation. Uh -huh. I see, thank you. Yeah, so you require, uh, I mean, the this one. I mean, the, the integral path has a positive winding number. If it's negative, you need to change your integral path to another direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Is that clear? Yes. All right. Okay. I mean, any questions so far? Okay. If it's not, I, let me just keep going. Okay, so right now we have a tool. This is mathematical tool to understand the, the condensed matter system light node semi metal. We can solve some real problem in light node semi metal. <laughs> the real problem here is uh, if we have a two on, one on link, which means two ring here, basically it's easy to realize in the real condensed matter system. Then the people are in very interesting is can we get half link? And to get half link in this semi metal system, there's a deep reason I will talk about later. But how can it's possible? Like we have, like we move this ring, and they come across each other, and we have, uh, we we have this at the beginning is uh, L plus, and the crown close. Hopefully, we have L minus transition to get the half link, and the the, the result we we calculate uh, if you like a. Uh, no detail uh, we can discuss later. As answer is no, it's not possible if we have this not transition directly to half link. It's not possible because uh, the deep, the reason is the any spectrum some impose some constraint. So this one is not possible to transition to half link. So the only way if you have a two on link, uh, have one touch point, you will be a kind of not. That's what we show. Uh, in our paper, and uh, there's some technical detail, but uh, I'm not talking about this here. Okay, so if there's some constraint here, there is some general constraint. So uh, like I, I showed you before, we have these four touch points. Basically, it's uh, just a uh, four ring. They touch from one to the other. So there's four touch points here. And we show you, okay, there are five possibilities, five different knots, if there's no physical constraint. It's just from mathematics, we have five choices. But right now, we, <coughs> we impose some constraint. Then all the possibilities reduce to three. But let's still show you, okay, the, 
we still can form the half link for n equal to two. Here, just an uh, example, if we have some transition like this one, this is exactly the half link. So just show you, we need to have a full touch point to form a half link to predict to let people, okay, you need to do a uh, full touch point to get half link. Okay, so, <laughs> but why we want to, in condensed matter physics, we want, want to find a half link. The reason is this the slide I present, I really not fully understand. Uh, if, if some people understand this slide to this time, I mean, we can discuss about this. So the reason is from the transcendent theory. Basically, this not theory is related uh, by the transcendent theory. Uh, I think it's written by Witten. I tried to read this paper, but I failed. Anyway, so uh, for gauge group, uh, U1 gauge group for transcendent theory, is the correspondent, the, the list change of will relate with linking number. And the linking number will talk about the half link. Its linking number is not zero. So we'll correspond to not trivial change of theory. So that's why we're interesting to want to realize not trivial change of theory in condensed matter system in semi metal. And so on and so forth. If we have a other gauge of like a SU2, will correspond to the uh, Jones polynomial. But I don't understand, I, I don't know how to derive them. So if people can show me how to derive them and understand what does that mean, that would be grateful. And uh, of course, the, the sound, the sound, the sound group are different, you'll get a different polynomial. At least all polynomials related with not theory. Okay, my last slide. Uh, here we talk about two, some mathematical stuff, topology in uh, topology of nodal line, nodal line semi metal. The first one is this nodal line protect by widening number. This kind of topology invariant protect the nodal line node. The second one is once we have oriented line node, it can be described by Jones polynomial, which is not a not invariant. And it's easy, interesting to explore the interplay between of a perpound physics to connect a not theory and a transcendent theory. This is why I not fully understand the connection here and a semi metal. So if you are interested in this. Uh, transcendent theory and not theory. I think you maybe a lot of mathematician here knows well. Please let me know. I will very interested to discuss the transcendent theory and the not theory. And I, of course, I know very well about uh, C metal. And uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Jinkai, for a very illuminating talk. So, is there any other questions from the audience? Uh, if you do, uh, please unmute yourself and speak up or raise your hand so that I can see, see you. Okay, so, so Chinkai, uh, you just uh, classified some certain kind of the uh, topological uh, nature of the, some, um, some metals. So do you have uh, any a concrete idea of what those metals could be or can you predict that the there will be no metal in such uh, nature. In, in nature, you can't create such a metal or something. Yeah, so it's like a, in, some in principle here is the, like here, uh, it's not possible you have uh, just two ring and one point to mm -hmm. help from the half link, semi metal. Just some rule here. You must have like a mob, like a like a phone, like a, where is this? Sorry, like a phone like this, like four touch mm -hmm. point, and uh, the transition you need to perceive choose like a uh, here is the L plus and sorry L minus or, or L, I think L minus and L zero and L minus L zero, this is just, and if finally you can get like a half link. Basically is uh, if we just use mathematic constraint, um, you can get a lot of more possibility. Uh, where is it? Here. But actually the bent energy dispersion also have additional constraint. So which mm -hmm. is forbidden to you to form the Solomon knot or Trifoli not if you have just four touch points. And eventually you need to have more touch points to form 
like a more complicated knot in condensed matter system. That's my prediction. That prediction is like a general the rule for that to tell people if they want to find the material, it like if I want to find a tree foil knot, this this plot is not possible to find mm -hmm. a tree foil knot. You only the best you can do is find the half link. Yeah, yes. And uh, how does that uh, prediction translate into the actual uh, observation of uh, composing some materials? Uh, it, can you predict some kind of the conductivity or uh, specific heat or something? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, uh, that's very complicated. Um, I mean, the conductivity possibility basically is from transmission theory. I mean, mm. the system sound uh, magnet take electric uh, cross, uh, response. If a trans theory, the, the least theta time is not zero, you have half link like here, then you have some, I don't know, uh, electric magnetic response mm -hmm. here. So that's the, the prediction here. And um, some signature, uh, I don't think, Less other signature for that. So far, I don't know. I, I we need to calculate other physical quantity to make sure there's no other thing here. Maybe less sounds thing interesting, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, uh, if not, uh, let's thank uh, Chinkai again. And uh, just thank let you. me uh, stop this streaming and you are free to talk to uh, anybody or you can ask uh, actually uh, questions, Chinkai is still here. So uh, I'm stopping the uh, YouTube now. <laughs>